So the four, uh, four homework is about uh, expanding and condensing logarithms um, and simplification. Uh, we're going to um, do a mixture of them together. So let's go ahead and get started with 4, 4. So problems 1 through 6 are about expanding when you have uh, multiplication or division inside. So let's start, let's do 3 and 6 together, okay? And I'm sorry that's a little fuzzy, but <laughs> the original picture wasn't the greatest picture. So if we look, uh, you want to note what your logarithm is. It's a log base 3. And we are going to expand it by using the logarithm of the top minus the logarithm of the bottom as your first step. Well, I want to do, well, we'll keep going with this one, but I'm going to go backwards. We're going to do two. I, I wanted to do a multiplication as well. Okay, so this is going to be the log of the top. I'm sorry about that. Here you go. Got it, got it, got it. I fixed it. Um, we're, for this one, uh, I want to do a division. Uh, we'll do uh, a multiplication as well. So this first one for number three, because it is a fraction, we want to think of the log at the top minus the log at the bottom. And so it's going to be the log base 3 of 9 minus the log base 3 of x squared. Now, if our number sitting here is related to our base. We can uh, reduce it just because of the fact that they're related. If we have a power on the thing inside, we can uh, take care of that too. Um, remember, this power can drop down in front. So we can simplify this one more time. Um, three, the log base 3 of 9 is 2 because I would put a power of 2 on the number 3 to get a 9. And then here we can just drop that 2 down in front. We can't do anything else with this. These are unlike terms. So you just leave it. Okay. Let's go backwards to number 2. I, I want to do one that's just a complete like multiplication. Um, and so you want to think about each of the factors that are in there. And we want to split them apart right off the bat. If they are multiplied, we are going to add those factors. Any factor that's divided, we are going to subtract. And so we can just do this as the log base 2 of 4 minus the log base 2 of x squared. I'm sorry, plus. Plus the log base 2 of y. Because those were all multiplied, we would add the logarithms together. Now we can do a little simplification. This part can simplify because two and four are completely related. Uh, this can simplify because powers are allowed or should drop down in front. And so our final answer should be two plus two log base two of x plus the log base two of y. So does anybody have any questions about number two or three? Okay, so now let's move on to five or six. Um, let's do six. So it is a uh, division. So we are allowed to split it up using rules of uh, products and quotients or you know, multiplication and division. You want to think about those two multiplied and this one divided. So we are going to add up or keep positive the natural log of each of the top pieces, but we are going to subtract the natural log of the bottom pieces. Uh, 
Um, now we have a little bit of fixing we have to do. Uh, for a square root, we want to rewrite that as a one-half power. That's something that I showed you earlier. That's a trick, and that's a trick you want to get used to. These things are inverses, so that's saying what power to put on e to get an e to the fourth. So that's just going to be a minus four. The only thing we could do here, and we should do, is take this, drop it down in front. So our final answer would be the natural log of x plus one-half natural log of y minus four. Any questions about that? So let's look at this piece alone. So the natural log of e to the fourth these two pieces are inverses, so they're going to cancel and leave us with a 4. But let's discuss why. This is really the log base e. We don't see it, but a natural log is a log base e of e to the 4th. When our base here matches our base here, you're saying, what do I put on e to get e to the 4th? Oh, it's 4. And so this setup or this setup will both cancel out, just leaving you with the power that's shown. So the rule is the, the natural log of e to any power will always be that power. And also uh, the log base b of any b to a power will also equal that power. So that's just a, a simplification that is going to happen. Um, And you're welcome. Uh, any other questions about, let me show you those particular problems. Okay, so I think you'll be okay with that top section. So now, once we've learned to expand it, pull it apart, now we need to talk about condensing it, putting it back together. And so I actually want to start with, I want to do number 8 and number 10. So let's start with number 8. One of the last steps, usually sometimes the very last step, um, of the last problems, um, was dropping down that power. So the, the first step in this problem is to take that power back in. So the 3 goes back in as a power. I'm sorry, I was going to do number 8. Well, let's start with number 10. <laughs> the 4 is going to come up uh, and multiply by any power that's there. The 5 is going to come up and multiply by any power that's there. So any front coefficient that is in front of our logarithm is going to come in and become a power and follow power rules on the thing inside. So the first thing I'm going to do to this one is write it as the natural log of x cubed minus the natural log of x to the 8. Now let's analyze why that's an 8. The rules of powers are if you have a power to a power, you multiply. So as we bring that in there, it has to become an 8. And then we have here the natural log of x plus 1 to the fifth, okay? Now, take a look at their signs. All the pieces that are positive are going to multiply inside of our logarithm. All the pieces that are negative are going to go underneath or divide. So I think of the positive ones are the top of my fractions. The negative ones become the bottom of my fraction. So to condense this down into one logarithm, we're going to make it a fraction on top the only positive piece is x cubed. On the bottom, the uh, negative pieces are two of them. We're going to multiply them. It's going to be x to the eighth, and then uh, x plus 1 to the fifth. Now, sometimes you'll discover a simplification that can occur. Well, this x cubed and x to the eighth can simplify down we would have a final answer of the natural log 
of 1 over x to the fifth, x plus 1 to the fifth. And that's our answer. That's, that's it. We're done. Any other questions about that problem before we try? We'll do the one above it. We'll do number 8. So the positive pieces become a multiplication on the top. If you have negative pieces, they go underneath. Okay, let's go backwards. Let's do number eight. Number eight, the only uh, individual coefficient I see is a two. Let's put it on our x squared, or make it an x squared. So we're going to have the natural log of x squared plus the natural log of five minus the natural log of x minus one. Now at this point, all of the uh, pieces that are positive are going to multiply. All the pieces that are negative are going to divide. And so our final answer will be, well, maybe the final answer, is the natural log. Now x squared times 5, let's just write it as 5x squared over x minus 1. So it's the natural log of 5x squared over x minus 1. Now, there's no way to simplify that. My x minus 1 is only going to simplify if there's another factor of x minus 1. There isn't. We're done. That's as far as we can go. So our goal here for problems 7 through 10 is to condense it into one logarithm and just simplify it as far as we can go. Any questions there? Okay, let's do 11 and 12. Now let me read the instructions here. Um, it says that the log base, if the log base b of 2 is approximately uh, 0. Point, that is a zero, 0. 0.437, and the log base b of 3 is approximately 0. 0.6826, and the log base b of 7 is approximately 1.2091, then approximate each of the following. So we have log base bases that are out, so we're going to relate them back to our log base b's that are given. You want to take the number, so we have the number 42, and we want to re relate it to the numbers that we see. Well, when I think of 42, I think of 6 times 7. Now, 7 was on the list, but 6 was not, so I'm going to think about that as 2 times 3 times 7. Now, the reason we want to do that is because, because, because of our laws of logarithms, we can split that apart. And all factors can be split into their own logarithms as long as we add them together. So this is the same as the log base b of 2 plus the log base b of 3 plus the log base 3 of 7. So we know what those are. They told us that the log base b of 2 is approximately 0 0.437. The log base b of 3 is approximately 0 0.6826 and then the log of 7 is approximately 1.2091 so now it's just a matter of adding those together I'll do it above it here so let me grab a calculator so it's 0 0.437 plus 0 0.6826 plus 1.2 uh, 1.2071. And so that is 2.3267. Okay, so we're just trying to use our laws of logarithms to split it apart so that, that we can then relate it back to the values they gave us. Any questions about that? Number 11. Now let's do 12. And then we're going to look at the bottom of the page. So for number 12, remember, we have to relate it to the numbers 2, 3, and 7. That is a fraction with the top being 2 and the bottom being 3. So we are allowed to pull it apart if we subtract. So this is just going to be the log base b of 2, the top, minus the log base b of the bottom, 3. Now we know those values. The log base b of 2 was 0 0.437. The log base b of 3 was 0 0.6826. So we just subtract them. And let me tell you what that is. 0 0.437 plus 0 0.6826 plus 
minus 0.6826 is negative 0 0.2456. So you're just taking your rules, splitting those things up as either fractions or, uh, you know, they're going to add up the pieces or we're going to subtract the pieces. Okay. Any questions there? Okay, so the last thing we want to do is the change of base formula. Now, let's take a look at 14. For 14, normally, I would go, uh, yeah, there's nothing I can do. Um, 2 is not related to the number 17. But this is what you can do. Um, we can use a natural log in the change of base formula and just do the natural log of the inside divided by the natural log of the base. There's a reason it works, but technically we could do that because there is a natural log button on a calculator. And so the natural log of 17 divided by the natural log of 2, that is approximately, and it says four decimal places, 4.0875. And think about it, if you put a power on a 2 that's just a touch over 4, you're going to get 17. Because if you put a 4 power, you're going to get 16. Okay. So, you have all the homework done. Or, I mean, you know, a good chunk of it done. So, uh, any questions on this one before I stop this one real quick? Okay.